30 years have passed since these monsters appeared. However, thanks to those who have gained supernatural powers, they no longer pose a threat to humanity. The guy hit the monster with a fiery sword. The girl shot bright energy from her bow. The hooded girl kicked powerfully. This gave birth to a new international sport, Hunter League. The blue Hunter League logo was visible on a large display above the stadium. The main character entered the stage to a roar of applause. He inserted a magazine with cartridges into the machine gun. The glasses on his head sparkled under the spotlight. He was a legendary player here. The main character, a guy with dark hair and brown eyes, wearing a white shirt with black coats, grinned contentedly. People in the comments were talking about how Jang Hyun wasted too much money by not being the best players, and they could afford to take two major league players if they got rid of him. After his underwhelming performance in the summer season and after he failed to make the playoffs, all his achievements and stubborn corpse disappeared in the blink of an eye. Jang Hyun looked at his phone screen in shock. It's all because of these two seasons. He threw the phone on the table in rage. The man sitting opposite him raised the corner of his mouth nervously. He addressed him, and the main character raised his head in response. The man began to speak. He said it looks like this season will be his last. Jang Hyun opened his eyes in shock. The man said the president wanted him to retire and focus on marketing and business, and there was also the matter of his mandatory military service. He asked if he realized he couldn't do this forever. Jang Hyun grinned nervously. He thought it would be better if they just told him to leave the team. He would be lying if he said he never thought about resigning. Remembering how he hid around the corner while the explosions went off, he thought that he would inevitably grow old and his skills would deteriorate. Peeking out from around the corner, Jang Hyun began firing from his machine gun. Remembering how he lifted the cup above his head, he couldn't believe that he was being told to become the figurehead of the team, especially when he single-handedly led the team to victory. The main character clenches his teeth. Cursing, he kicked the table in rage. The impact caused the table to turn over and the man screamed in fear. Jang Hyun started to leave, and the man asked him where he was going. The main character said that he didn't think he should listen to him anymore. The man clenched his teeth and cursed in irritation. Calling him ungrateful, he told him to show some respect and listen when adults talk to him. He said that's why his image is so bad and everyone wants him to resign. Pointing his finger at him, the man said that it was not worth the trouble of raising such a worthless and ungrateful person like him. The main character bulged his eyes in rage. Stopping, he turned around. He began to approach the man with long strides, and he was noticeably frightened. Jang Hyun lifted him by the collar. The vein in his face bulged with anger, and he asked if he was so comfortable here that he forgot who brought him here. Gritting his teeth, he thought that if only he hadn't tempted him. Full Bloom, C+, Rank Upgrade Requirement, Increases Over Time. Ability, Awaken Your Talent. The Full Bloom Rank Increase will soon stop, but all your stats will increase in proportion to your rank. The protagonist thought, if only he hadn't been tempted to activate Full Bloom in high school. The man said that he only did what was best for him. Jang Hyun's eyes widened. He threw the man back into the chair. He looked at him in fear, covering his face with trembling hands. The main character thought that it was all because of him. Turning around and leaving, he thought that nothing would change even if he used violence. He felt worthless. Walking down the crowded street, he thought that he was holding so many trophies in his hands, but it all ended like this. Jang Hyun thought that all his skills and perks were high rank and extremely useful, but he no longer had room for improvement. With his hands in his pockets, he thought that all he had left was an aging body and a skill that had been prematurely blocked. His full bloom stops him from moving forward. Standing in front of the pedestrian crossing, the main character wondered if it was all in vain. The traffic light turned green. As Jang Hyun began to cross the road, he wondered if there was any point in continuing to live. The truck, having lost control of the steering, was rapidly approaching him. The main character looked in amazement towards the bright headlights. Looking at the vehicle approaching him, he thought that he no longer saw the point. The truck hit the main character with a loud impact sound. Blood gushed from his mouth. He fell onto the cold asphalt, and passers-by screamed in fear. Having surrounded him, they began to call an ambulance. Lying in a pool of his own blood, Jang Hyun thought that this was not true. He looked at the blue stone ring sparkling on his finger. He thought he wanted to keep trying. The main character remembered how he was breathing heavily while standing around the corner in battle. He thought that he wanted to hear the crowd chant his name again, wanted to give an incredible performance on this stage that made his heart race. He thought that he wanted to come out on top with his team. 
he lay on the asphalt and tears appeared in his eyes. Closing his eyes, he lost consciousness. This was the last thing he could remember from his past life. Everyone has fantasized about time travel at least once. People always regret something, so it is common for them to strive to return to the past. The ordinary is nothing more than a fantasy because it is impossible. The dialog box says, scanning completed. The next dialog box showed the results of the physical test. The system asked the main character to press a button in the lower right corner and stand up. Jang Hyun looked at his palms in shock. When he opened his eyes, he realized that he had returned to the day his career began. A man in a white coat said that the results had been received and asked to wait a minute. Smiling, he congratulated him on being truly awakened. The main character's mother looked at the results in confusion. The main character called her to go. On the street, his mother asked him when he found out. Jang Hyun replied, not long ago. She said it was better for him not to think about anything stupid. The main character asked if she meant becoming a hunter. His mother, frowning, said that becoming a hunter is very difficult, and the hunters he sees on TV are the best players in the division, of which there are very few. She told him if he expected fame, he'd better give up now. Jang Hyun wanted to tell her that he actually came from the future in which he was a legendary player in the Hunter League, but she wouldn't believe him. He said that he would prove it to her. Tapping him on the shoulder, she said that she didn't have to prove anything. She asked about what he just dodged. The main character grinned in response. His mother told him that he would be in high school next year and he should focus on his studies. Running ahead, Jang Hyun told her not to worry, because it will happen. With a smile full of enthusiasm, he thought that he would prove it to her, and they would see what the legendary hunter could do by going back in time. Smirking, he thought that form is a temporary phenomenon but class is forever. The main character was lying in a capsule with his eyes closed. The awakening test uses state-of-the-art technology to analyze potential physical performance. However, there is one thing that the test cannot determine. The main character stood up. Skills. There was a bright blue light in his hands. Usually the awakened can only guess what their skills are and how to use them. Frowning his brows, Jang Hyun closed his eyes. Opening his eyes, he thought that this was not about him because he had an all-seeing eye. He was lying on the bed with his legs crossed. Above it was a blue interface window. He thought that, as expected, his full blossom had returned to Ranky closing his eyes. The protagonist thought that the skill level could be increased, and he could always get his perks back. He stood up in bed, looking at his muscles in the mirror. He thought that now it was more important for him to get used to his body and skills. He thought it was a rather pathetic sight. He turned around as he heard his mother say that this was why she was saying that they should watch him for a year. The father said that it was his life and he should be allowed to do whatever he wanted with it. She argued that he was still in high school and they couldn't let him act on his own because that would be irresponsible. The father said that's why he says they should only give him a year. He said it was just a year and if things didn't work out he could move on. His mother asked if he understood that at his age, even one year is important. She asked what he would do if Jang Hyun wasted his time chasing a pipe dream while all his classmates were getting good grades because they wasted their time studying. Standing outside the door, the main character thought that his mother had indeed always been categorically against him becoming a hunter, but he could not afford to waste time arguing with her. Mother said that a lot of things can change in a year. The main character opened his eyes wide. He thought that she was right. After all, after a year, players would be able to participate in dozens of matches. They would gain experience and improve their skills with each match. He thought that in his previous life, Full Bloom would have been a B rank if he had started a year earlier. He remembered the comments of people from his past life. Turning the doorknob, Jang Hyun thought that this alone could greatly influence the course of events. Throwing open the door, he said that he didn't need a year, just six months. He told his mother that he would prove it to her in six months. The mother turned her head towards him, and the father smiled joyfully. The main character said that he was serious. Raising his fist and hitting his chest with it, he said with a smile that he would show them. Dressed in sportswear, Jang Hyun exclaimed in shock that he could not enter. The girl said that minors need permission from a guardian. The main character asked if he understood correctly that he needed the guardian's signature. The girl said yes, frowning. Jang Hyun thought that he had completely forgotten about it because he was an adult in his previous life. He thought unhappily that he wouldn't be able to practice if he returned home now. He asked if there was another way, and someone put a hand on his shoulder. A guy with blonde hair greeted him with a smile. He asked why he was here. Jang Hyun thought it was Kim Di Young. In his past life, he was a melee fighter who invariably achieved rank 2 or 3 in the first division. He never took first place, but he was often compared to a top player, and frankly, it came easy to him. The main character opened his mouth. 
He tilted his head to the side questioningly, scratched his head and asked who he was. He thought that in this life he should not know who he was. Di Yong gestured fussily with his hands and said that he was in a parallel class and his name was Di Yong. He asked if this meant anything to him. He said that in their school he is known as an awakened one. Turning away, Jang Hyun said that this was the first time he had heard about him. Di Yong opened his mouth at school. Smiling awkwardly, he said that this happens to him too. He asked what he was doing here and if he had come to try out for the Seoul Junior Hunter Academy Club. The main character said that he wanted to use the gym for training, but was told that his parents' permission was required. Di Yong's eyes began to sparkle and he asked if he needed his help. He said he was a member of the Academy's Junior Club, so he had easy access. Jang Hyun thought that at this time he had already joined the club. Di Yong said that in return he wants to watch him train. The main character thought that nothing comes for free, agreeing. He thought it was a little annoying but he had nothing to lose. The girl smiled and said that she had reserved the hall for them and a Soul Hunter Academy member, Di Yong, as his guardian. She told them to head to Hall 3. The main character was tying his sneakers, and Di Yong said that he didn't think there would be anyone at school who wanted to become a hunter. Jang Hyun asked if he was talking about him. Di Yong said yes. Looking up, he said that, as he said earlier, he was in the Academy Club, but since most of the members were older than him, he didn't know anyone, and it was difficult for him to fit in. Turning around, he asked why he came here, because he said that he would not qualify. He said that despite the name, no one uses the place for training. The main character said that it was most likely because everyone was preparing to join the Hunter League. After all, it was just a general training base. Stepping forward, he asked if he was sure he wanted to stay. Stretching his shoulders, he said that he was just going to test his skills and do some exercises, so it wouldn't be anything exciting. With a smug smile, Di Yong said that he could help him since they go to the same school. Jang Hyun thought that even in this life he strives to attract attention. Sighing, he thought that considering his past life, he was decades older than him, and he was definitely not going to ask him for help. Dialogue boxes surrounded him. One of them says, Setup complete. Do you want to continue? The main character pressed the confirmation button. A flash of bright light appeared in the room. He opened his eyes wide and Di Yong covered his hand. Jang Hyun thought it was a clone of the tank he had summoned. He thought that if he were to compare it to video games, he would be something of a training dummy. The holographic knight raised his palm up. A huge shield appeared in his hand. The main character thought that the only difference is that this is such a difficult enemy that it is almost impossible to come out of cover. The dialogue box says, Tank clone, defense unknown. Di Young asked if he clicked in the wrong place. He said that he needed to summon a regular clone if he wanted to train. He said that even in training mode it would be extremely difficult to do anything with his current level. A flash of light flashed in the protagonist's palm and he asked what he was talking about. Taking a spear in his hand, he said that the whipping bags must be strong. Taking a fighting stance, he asked about how difficult it would be to do something. Turning around, he told him to speak for himself with a big smile. How to break something hard and durable. The easiest way is to hit it with something even harder and more durable. Jang Hyun thought that obviously he couldn't do it now. Jumping into the attack, he thought that this did not mean that he had no other options. His eyes were wide open. Looking at his opponent's shoulder, he thought that he should aim for his knuckles. He made a quick thrust with his spear. The main character plunged his spear into the shoulder of the tank clone. The opponent's arm was torn off, and Jang Hyun, landing behind him, thought that he had excellent control of his body. Turning around, he activated his all-seeing eye, and his eye flashed red. Several red dots glowed on the body of the tank clone. The main character pointed the tip of his spear forward. He ran forward. Swinging his spear, he struck a cutting blow across the enemy's body. Then he thrust the spear from top to bottom. The tank clone, torn into pieces, fell to the floor. The main character stood with his back to him while he dissolved into pixels. He thought that he didn't expect it to go so well and it had to be written down. Di Young said it was cool. Kneeling down, he said that he must have set it to minimum defense, otherwise he would have needed a unique weapon to do any damage to it. Jang Hyun thought maybe he was distorting what he saw because he thought it didn't make sense. Di Young said that, nevertheless, his movements were impressive, and he was willing to bet that he would have passed the fight. He asked if he had any training in sword or spear fighting. He said he wanted to try it too before their team practice started. The main character agreed indifferently. Closing his eyes, he thought that he did not need to explain anything to him, and he would see everything for himself when he tried. Stars sparkled in the night sky above the buildings. The blade in Di Young's hands was lowered to the ground. Breathing heavily, he thought in disbelief that he had done exactly the same thing. A clone of the tank stood opposite him, unharmed. 
Di Yong, wiping his face, said that he would also set his protection to minimum. He raised his head wearily. He gripped the hilt of the sword in his hand and, gritting his teeth, swung it, attacking the tank clone. Sweating nervously, Di Yong wondered why the tank clone wasn't taking any damage. The full moon was shining over the city. The heavy steel door swung open. Di Yong hit the tank clone's shield. Wiping his face, he thought that he must have configured something incorrectly. Someone called out to him from behind. A guy with dark hair asked if he was going to greet his Sionbi. Bowing, Di Yong said that he was glad to see him. Noticing his opponent, the guy smiled. He asked why he was fighting a tank clone. Scratching the back of his head, Di Yong smiled awkwardly and said that he just wanted to stretch his legs and practice a little. The guy asked who even fights a tank clone to warm up. Poking his finger at his forehead, he told him not to be a fool, because he would not be able to damage him even on low settings. Di Yong gritted his teeth silently. The window showed water surrounded by a city at night. The main character, folding his arms across his chest, thought that he was too weak. The Universal Training Base offers basic equipment for training hunters. He thought that after Di Yong left, he had the opportunity to fight the monsters he faced in the Hunter League and use the AI hologram function. He thought that it was acting as a sparring partner, and he concluded that he was too weak. Raising his eyes to the sky, he thought that his all-seeing eye was only B rank, so he could not land a powerful blow. Recalling his status window, Jang Hyun thought that his physical characteristics were only slightly superior to those of an ordinary person. He thought that he needed to work on his body to become stronger, at least full bloom speeds up regeneration. Rolling his eyes, he thought that this could only be achieved through training. Placing his hand on his face, the main character thought that he would not have enough time, because in the evening the training room is only available to club members, and he cannot get permission from his parents every time he wants to train. Taking out his phone, he thought that he needed to find a place where he could train alone. Di Yun called him on his phone. The main character answered the phone and Di Yong asked if he would come to practice. Jang Hyun asked, what? Di Yong said that he would treat him to dinner. He asked if he would come. A yellow sign glowed above the glass doors of the restaurant. Seeing the main character, Di Yong raised his hand and called him. Sitting down at his table, the main character said that he seemed to have a lot of money. Laughing, Di Yong said that he actually has too much money. Pouring water into a glass, he said that, as far as he knows, it is impossible to become a hunter if he has a poor family. The main character said that this is true. He thought that the awakening test and weapons were very expensive. Looking at him, he thought that he had too much money. He thought that he was the same as his previous life. He thought that he was doing everything he could to be the center of attention. Jang Hyun asked why he asked him to come. Di Yong asked what he meant. The main character said that he is sure that he is not treating him to dinner because he cannot afford it. Smiling awkwardly, Di Yong said that he was right and dinner was just an excuse. He said that he wanted to ask him something. Calling the waiter, the main character asked if this was a question about a tank clone. Di Yong said that he tried to do exactly like him, but it didn't work, and he was curious if he had tweaked anything. Before he could finish speaking, he noticed something and turned pale. He lowered his head and Jang Hyun turned around. Noticing the guys entering the restaurant, he thought they had the same uniform as Di Yong. He wondered if they were his teammates. The guy with dark hair said, laughing, that the monkey was beating the tank clone with a mithril sword. Someone asked if maybe he was testing the strength of his sword. Di Yun lowered his head in embarrassment, his brows furrowed, and the guy said that he actually tried to defeat the clone with this sword, and he simply had no words. Sitting down at a table nearby, he said he asked why he was doing it and it turned out that he had seen his friend do it. He asked if maybe he should have asked if his friend shot laser beams. Laughing, his friend said that it must have been funny to watch two fools doing this. The guy said that, unfortunately, his friend was not there. The main character took a sip of water from a glass and thought that it turns out that he was disturbing Di Yong while he was training hard. Putting the glass on the table, he said that he couldn't leave it like that. He said with a grin that there was no need to change anything in the settings for the tank clone. Remembering how he cut off a clone's limbs, but said it was easy if you knew what to do. Smiling, Jang Hyun said that it was good that he was trying to figure it out. He said there are a bunch of fools who say it can't be done, but they just can't do it. The guy at the table nearby furrowed his eyebrows and bulged his eyes with anger. He got up from the table, and the main character asked if no one at his academy knew this. He asked if his friend had paid to be admitted. Di Yong scaredly told him not to say that. A shadow hung over their table. The guy kicked the table and told him to shut up. He asked Jang Hyun with a smirk who he thought he was to disrespect an academy student. 
he said that if the awakened one hit him, there would only be broken bones left here, and he would give him only three seconds. The main character looked at him, and the guy said that he had better apologize. Jang Hyun wondered why he was talking like a movie cliché, sighing. He stood up and thought that he had been looking forward to this free dinner. The guy looked at him expectantly. The main character immediately punched him in the face, and he flew to the side, hitting the back of his head on the table. His friends called him by name. They started helping Jai Su to his feet. Jang Hyun thought that if someone gives him three seconds, this is what he will do. Smiling widely, he thought that he never missed an opportunity to strike first. Jai Su jumped to his feet and cursed. The main character told him that to Di Young he is a Sionbi, but to him he is just a stranger, so it is better for him not to mess with him. Jai Su punched in anger, and Jang Hyun dodged it with a flick of his head. Smiling, he asked what he said earlier. He asked about how little would be left of him if he hit him. He said that the problem is this very if. A vein bulged on Jai Su's face with anger and he punched again. The main character hit his fist at the same moment. He hit Jai Su hard in the face. Jai Su staggered. Wiping his face, he said that now he had really pissed him off. Jang Hyun raised an eyebrow in surprise. Jai Su was surrounded by a whirlwind of purple energy. The main character thought that his all-seeing eye was warning him. The dialogue box says, all-seeing eye. You can calculate risks and identify weaknesses. Jai Su hit the ground with purple energy and the main character jumped to the side. Having landed, he dropped to his knee. Looking at the dent left in the floor, he wondered if it was a gravitational attack. He turned his head sharply towards his opponent. Shrouded in a purple aura, Jai Su smiled crazily, and Jang Hyun wondered if he was seriously going to use the skill here. Di Young was leading people out of the restaurant, and the main character thought that there were ordinary people here. Jai Su waved his palm. He lifted tables and chairs off the ground. He hit them hard on the ground, leaving a crack in the floor. Taking a deep breath, the protagonist thought that he didn't intend to be too cruel to him. Standing in front of him, he called out to Jai Su. Smiling evilly, he told him that he was dead. With a wave of his hand, Jai Su shouted that these were his words. He hit the ground and Jang Hyun jumped high into the air. Landing on the floor, he cursed. Frowning, he thought that he could evade his skill thanks to the all-seeing eye. The plate glittered under his feet, and he thought that he could not close the distance. Frowning, he turned sharply. He grabbed a plate lying on the floor. Smirking, he threw it to the side. Jai Su looked in amazement at the plate approaching his face. He grinned. The violet aura surrounding him surrounded the plate. Having fallen to the floor, it broke into fragments. Jai Su laughed and asked if he really thought it would work against him. The main character threw another plate at his face. Throwing plates at him one after another, he said that he should have dodged. Jai Su's eyes widened in rage. Jang Hyun thought that after using a skill, you need to wait a while to use it again. This is called a cooldown. Enveloping the plates in a purple aura, Jai Su swore in confusion. The plates fell to the floor and broke. The main character said with a grin that another plate was flying towards him. Jai Su held his shaking hand with his hand. He thought that he couldn't use his skill. The plate hit him in the face at high speed. Jang Hyun thought that if he used the skill without thinking about its recovery, he would become completely open to the enemy's attacks. Holding his hand to his face, Jai Su shouted at him to stop his tricks. The main character was not in front of him, and he asked in amazement where he had gone. Jang Hyun shouted, Head. Jai Su raised his head in confusion, looking in different directions. The main character punched him in the stomach. Jai Su doubled over from the impact. Staggering, he cursed and said that he had spoken about the head. The main character shouted again, Head. Looking around in confusion, Jai Su wondered where he would strike now. He wondered if he would hit him in the stomach again. Jang Hyun punched him in the face. Dropping him to the floor, he began to quickly hit him in the face with his fists, shouting, Head. The beaten Jai Su lay on the floor among broken dishes. Breathing heavily, the main character wiped his face. Covered in sweat, he looked around. He thought that now, it was not he who organized the pogrom here. He thought that, however, he had actually hit him first. Jang Hyun thought that he was the only one lying on the ground while there was not a scratch on him. Scratching his head, he wondered what he should do since Di Young and this guy's friends had left. He noticed a police car outside. Frowning, he thought that there seemed to be no other choice. He lifted Jai Su, who was unconscious. He splashed water on his face, and he woke up in amazement. He found the main character lying on the floor in front of him. Jai Su stood over him, surrounded by broken dishes. Cursing, he swung his fist in rage. Hearing the voice, he stopped and turned around. Di Young, pointing his finger at Jai Su, brought a policeman with him. Jai Su looked at them confused, then he looked at the main character. Jang Hyun, fearfully covering his face with his hands, asked him to stop and not hit him. 
Raising his taser gun, the policeman ordered Jai Su to raise his hands and not resist. The main character grinned contentedly. He thought that it seemed like he had managed to fool the police with his game, so there would be no consequences for him. He thought that Jai Su probably wouldn't tell the truth either because he didn't want to admit that he was beaten by a newcomer. He thought that even if he said that he used his skill, it would still be an aggravating circumstance. The steel door swung open and Di Young said that Jai Su has been having a hard time lately. Wiping his face with a towel, he said he had been reprimanded by other team members and there were rumors that he might be expelled. Jang Hyun thought that it seemed like justice had been served. Di Young asked if he was going to take a break. After pressing the confirmation button, the main character said that he did not have time for this. A tank clone appeared in front of him, smirking. Jang Hyun took the spear in his hand, and Di Young shrugged. Clutching the spear in his hand, the protagonist thought that Full Bloom gives him an awakened talent when he achieves special success. Looking at the skills description dialog box, he thought that, in other words, he was getting a new skill. He raised his leg. Jumping into the attack, the main character swung his spear and shouted, Head. He hit the clone with his spear. The dialog box says, Full Bloom, Awaken Talent. Aim your attacks. When you say the name of your skill or indicate where to strike, your power increases. Your words do not have to match your actions. The clone's head flashed with a bright light, and he began to dissolve into pixels. Jang Hyun looked at his palm and thought that he didn't expect that what happened to Jai Su could be considered a special achievement. Scratching the back of his head, he thought that he had never seen this skill in his previous life. Sighing, he thought this was the perfect skill to make people think he was weird. At the table, his mother asked him that he was going to try to go to a survival show for hunters. The main character said yes. He told them to just watch him and he would show them what he could do. He thought that Hunter, the next generation was a television show dedicated to finding and mentoring aspiring hunters. He thought that registration had finally opened. The mother asked if there would be too much competition since it was a TV show. Her father told her to leave him alone because he would never succeed unless he took risks. His mother asked if he failed his business because he took a risk. Her father asked if she had to remember this. The main character chuckled awkwardly. Raising his index finger, he said that if he won the competition, he would get a place in the academy, or could join a third division team. Plus the cash prize was huge, and they would even make him a custom weapon. The mother said with concern that this really must be the case, since the competition is so great. Jang Hyun enthusiastically said that he was going to give it his all. His parents looked at each other in amazement. His mother agreed and told him not to come to her crying if he lost. The main character thought that this show is definitely wildly competitive as they choose the most promising candidate for the Hunter League from all over the country. The screen showed the Hunter League season rankings, and he thought that because of this, there were significant incentives for the best participants, even if they were not in first place, and, as it was, they only chose the best. Smiling, Jang Hyun mentally told his parents not to worry. He thought that he was holding a bunch of trophies in his hands. Continuing to eat dinner, he thought that he would not lose to amateurs. Hunters, the next generation. Written test part 3, 3 minute clones test. Smirking, the main character wiped the sweat from his face. The test was passed. Someone said that applications would start coming in soon. Three people dressed in uniforms were sitting at a large table. Joe Ah Ra, a TV show judge, told Min Siok that he once said that he had no desire to become a judge. She asked what made him change his mind. Lee Min Siok actually said a lot of things, and despite his success on the international stage, he felt like he didn't pay too much attention to his homeland. He said they never know for sure if there might be a nugget hiding among the contestants. Ning Soo Hyuk folded his arms and said that if there was one of them, he would definitely be in the professional league by now because the academy is always looking to attract new talent. Min Seok said that this is the whole problem, because those who can truly succeed with the right upbringing are the eccentric people who have true potential hidden within them. Ah Ra asked what he was saying about these weirdos again. She told him that these kids need someone to take care of them, not the league. Min Seok tells her that she is only saying that because she has never met Ethan, and he is indeed a real talent. Ah Ra told them to do what they want, because, in any case, each of them has equal weight. There was a TV show logo on the monitor screen. The main character thought that they were looking for the next star to take charge of the future of the Hunter League. He thought it sounded tempting, but the first one was a written test. He wondered if they were serious. Typing unhappily on the keyboard, he thought that he needed to indicate age, height, characteristics and even affiliation with any organization, and he was sure that this was the favorite part of the students of the academy. 
The screen reads, give details about your previous profession before starting your hunting career. Tell us about the challenges you faced and how you overcame them. Jang Hyun thought that in this life he had not yet faced a huge number of difficulties. He read the following question, tell us about the difficulties you faced in the group and how you overcame them. He thought that in his previous life, he forced his teammates to obey him despite everything. He drank water from a glass. Smiling awkwardly, the protagonist thought that this was bad, and he thought that he would just participate and win easily, but he did not expect such a setup. Clicking the computer mouse button, he thought that if there was a practice test, he could catch up. Noticing something, he opened his eyes wide. The screen says, to go to part 3, click here. He clicked on the link. Jang Hyun thought that an awakened person's skills are usually shaped by his experiences or unique character traits. Once in the white space, the main character looked up and thought how someone could gain such a skill. Standing inside the large cube, he wondered if it was a teleportation skill or an illusion skill. The voice said that this part of the test included a practical aspect and he would participate in a three-minute test with clones. It said that he must demonstrate his skill by defeating waves of clones within three minutes. It said that his weapon will take the form that pops up in his head. Rubbing his chin, Jang Hyun asked about the weapon. He grinned. Two pistols appeared in his hand. He took the pistols in his hands. Stepping forward, he thought he was ready. Looking at the gun in his hand, the protagonist thought that he had chosen a pair of pistols, which he often used with magical weapon transformation. But other skills did not work. A voice told him to get ready and the test begins. It started the countdown. The main character's eyes flashed red. The dummies appeared in the room, and Jang Hyun thought, it doesn't look like they have as good a defense as the tank clone. He raised his pistols forward. When he started shooting, he thought that he would pass the test as quickly as he could. Ah Ra slammed her hands on the table and asked if they were making fun of her. She asked Su Hyok if he thought it was some kind of mistake. Looking at the main character on screen, Su Hyok said that this could be considered a bit problematic. Ah Ra said that this is not what they had in mind when they prepared the test. Raising her finger, she said that anyone could destroy these clones if they were given a gun, and that's cheating. She picked up the tablet from the table. Showing the profile of the main character, she said that this was unacceptable. When asked about difficulties, he replied that his life was going quite smoothly, so he did not face any difficulties. When asked about working in a group, he replied that he forces everyone to follow his orders so that there are no conflicts. Throwing the tablet on the table, Ara said that he was not taking this seriously. She asked if they didn't see a problem with these answers. Min Seok said that she is right about something. He said that, after all, pistols are not really suitable weapons for hunters. Tilting his head thoughtfully, he said that they were almost impossible to use in the league and just as difficult to use against monsters. He said that once the weapon is separated from the awakened person's body, the mana it contained dissipates. This means that in order to use a firearm, you need to imbue each bullet with mana. This is an incredibly difficult task, and it is difficult to store a lot of mana in them. Therefore, most people use swords or polearms. Sometimes you can see ranged weapons, but only with a low rate of fire, such as bows or crossbows. Min Seok thought that only someone like Ethan could fire a volley of bullets with a huge amount of mana. Raising his finger, he said with a smile that he was interested. Su Hyok said that he also had such thoughts. Ah Ra exclaimed in shock. Su Hyok said that she could argue that the candidate showed extreme insight in finding a loophole in the rules, and whether intentional or not. The end result is what really matters. Min Seok said that Su Hyok is right, and besides, this is not the last qualifying stage. He said they could always disqualify him later if he didn't meet their standards. He raised his head thoughtfully. Looking at the main character, he said that it seemed to him that he looked at weapons differently from them. Ah Ra asked how, for example. Min Seok replied, who knows. He thought that perhaps he believed that pistols were effective weapons in a hunting league. Shaking his head, he thought that this was impossible. He silently opened his eyes. Pressing a button on the remote, he asked if he could try using just one this time. One pistol in the hands of the protagonist disappeared into thin air. Smiling, Min Seok hoped that he would be proven wrong. The man said, so this is what happened to Jai Su. Di Yung said with a smile that fortunately his friend was not seriously injured. The man rubbed his chin thoughtfully and thought it was strange. He thought that maybe Jai Su wasn't that strong in hand-to-hand -hand combat but his skill was still incredibly great, but that guy wasn't hurt that much. Frowning, he thought that Jai Su had been beaten to within an inch of his life. He said what's done is done. He asked Di Young if he had applied for the Hunter League rookie show. Di Young said yes and he wanted to tell him because he will be busy filming for a while. 
The man asked with a smile if the guy who fought with Jai Su, Jang Hyun, would also participate. Di Yong, rubbing his chin in confusion, said that he doesn't know when they will ask him when they meet. The man said that he was sure that he was busy preparing for the show, and it was time for him to go. As he left, Di Yong bowed and said goodbye. The coach, tapping his finger on the table, thought that the situation was taking an interesting turn. Di Yong turned his head while walking along the corridor. After seeing Jai Su, he thought that he was going to be on the show too. The coach, grinning, thought that he wanted to quickly look at it. White clouds floated across the sky above the stadium. The main character stepped in front of the sign. Smiling, he thought that he had not been here for a long time, and this was the place where he began his journey. He stepped forward. He walked towards the stadium along an almost empty street. The Hunter League is divided into three divisions. The first division takes place inside the tower, the second and third take place in a virtual reality stadium. Jang Hyun thought with a smile that he used to wonder why these stadiums are so big, since almost no one uses them. Looking at the crowded stands, he thought that they seemed to be needed for such occasions. Among them was a guy with dark hair, Yoon Han Jol, a finalist on the TV show. Also present was Yu Hyo Ju, the finalist, a girl with short blonde hair. Jan Min Sun, another finalist, looked down with a smile. The main character thought that this show took place long before his debut, so he didn't expect to see familiar faces. Looking at Han Jol, he thought that there were actually quite a lot of them. Thinking about Hyo Ju with the huge hammer, he thought that there were some promising characters here. Min Sun scratched his head with an awkward smile as he stood in front of the microphones, and Jang Hyun thought he was wondering who would win. Smirking, he thought that this time it would be him. Someone called out to him. Di Yong waved his hand, pointing to an empty seat next to him. Sitting down next to him, the main character asked how he was doing. Di Yong said, great. He said he thought he would be in the hospital for a while. Smiling, Jang Hyun thought that it probably looked like Di Yong had suffered a pretty serious injury. Di Yong whispered to him that Jai Su was put on probation and would need three weeks to fully recover. The main character looked down. Seeing Jai Su, he asked how he ended up here. Jai Su frowned and darted his eyes nervously, and Di Yong said that he had no choice, because professional teams were looking for talent among the academy students, so he had to impress them. The cameraman pointed the camera at the stage. Fog enveloped the stage. The presenter said that they always need new players and new faces. Holding the piece of paper up, he asked who would shape the future of the Hunter League. He welcomed everyone to Hunters, the next generation. Blue spotlights began to shine brightly onto the stage. Raising his hands up, the presenter shouted that the birth of a legend begins right now. The holographic structure began to assemble on the stage. A huge tall tower appeared on the scene. The host welcomed viewers to the most spectacular show in the world, where they will meet the greatest hunters of the next generation. Di Yong smiled joyfully, and the host said that each of them who are here today has eclipsed the countless awakened ones throughout the country. Min Sun smiled nervously, and the host said that the competition for a place in the finals was won in 43.5. He asked to greet those who will represent the new era of Korean hunters with thunderous applause. The light came on in a room with three people, and he asked to be allowed to introduce the three judges to them. He announced Jo Ah-ra, the leader of the Korean Hunter League, who has three victories in the National League. He then announced Korea's best athlete on the world stage, who finished second in the World Hunter League, Lee min Seok. He then announced Soo Hyok, a prominent figure among the Korean national team players. Someone asked about whether this is actually Lee min Seok. The girl said she thought he was busy competing in a foreign league. The main character thought that these were quite big names. He thought that Min Seok and Soo Hyok were on the same level as who he was before. Closing his eyes, he smiled and thought that he didn't think he would lose to any of them. The host said that their contestants will perform tasks assigned by these judges. He announced that the first place winner would receive 500 million won and a weapon custom made by the Mora's workshop. Jang Hyun opened his mouth in amazement when he heard about the Mora's workshop. He thought that Mora's workshop's regular items were worth hundreds of millions of won, but the custom-made weapons were only for those deemed worthy, and he couldn't believe they were giving them away as a prize. Smiling, he thought that perhaps he would reach the same level of power as in his previous life much sooner. Ara said that now she will tell you about the first task. She said the 100 hunters gathered here beat out 4,350 other candidates, but there were still too many of them and they needed a real hunter. She raised a finger and furrowed her brow. She said that the first task would be a survival game, and the action would take place in a dungeon where real hunters once fought. The water flowed in the waterfall, 
and she said that they must hold out until there were only 20 participants left in the lands of lost souls. She added that in addition, the top 5 participants with the most points will receive an advantage in the next stage. The host announced the beginning, and people began to disappear from their seats. Smiling, the main character, enveloped in blue light, thought that it was finally beginning. He appeared among the trees under a clear blue sky. He looked around. Looking at the waterfall, he thought that in his past life this place was used for the finals. Remembering how he sat at the computer, he thought that he knew this place like the back of his hand. Closing his eyes, he thought with a smile that he knew the dungeon layout, the basic mechanics, the ecology, even the secret dungeon. Jang Hyun smiled widely, whistling. He wondered how he could do this. Survival game. Ah Ra thought that he wouldn't be able to exploit the loopholes there. She thought that he managed to pass the qualifying stage without even demonstrating proper skill, and one could argue that this showed his high intelligence. But she did not buy it. She narrowed her eyes and furrowed her brows. Ah Ra thought that a survival game could evaluate the basic skills of a hunter, combat prowess, adaptability, exploration and survival skills. He thought that the fake wouldn't stand a chance. Smirking, she mentally told him not to underestimate the Hunter League. Su Hyuk said that the overall skill level of these members is quite impressive. Min Seok agreed and said that it looks like Ah Ra has prepared something interesting, and this is a great way to get rid of hunters who lack experience or skills. Hearing the voice, they turned their attention to the screen. Someone said that there seems to be a problem and one of the participants is leaving the mission area. The screen showed that one of the participants had crossed the red dotted line. Su Hyuk said to show them what's going on there. The main character found himself in front of a large stone door with a pattern. Eyes wide, he grinned. Jumping up in shock, Ah Ra wondered how he knew about this place. She thought that an artifact from the lands of lost souls was hidden here. Artifacts are treasures hidden in dungeons that come in a wide variety of forms. Sometimes just getting an artifact is enough to guarantee victory. The main character remembered how he stood on stage with a cup in his hand. Ah Ra gritted her teeth and thought that this dungeon had not yet been used for quests, so no one should know about it, not even first division players, let alone ordinary people. Looking at Jang Hyun, she thought that he should not know about this place. Min Siak asked her in a whisper if she knew what was going on. He said if it was a mistake, they needed to figure it out, so she better tell them now. Ah Ra said it was not a mistake. She said that this virtual reality is modeled after a real dungeon, and Jang Hyun is now accessing a hidden area that no one knows about, not even the Hunter League players, which is why it is not on the map. Min Siok asked if she was claiming that the virtual reality replicated the existing dungeon, including its hidden area, which the participant is now entering. He asked what was in the hidden dungeon. Ah Ra silently lowered her gaze. She said, Ether, the artifact is so powerful that it is banned in the Hunter's League. Su Hyok and Min Siok opened their mouths in shock. They asked if they could remove it. Ah Ra said, only stopping the match. She said it was virtual reality, so he wouldn't be able to bring it into the real world, but he could use it in this match. Min Siok asked that such a powerful artifact should have a guardian. Guardians are monsters that protect artifacts. The more powerful the artifact, the stronger its guardian. Ah Ra exclaimed joyfully that he was right. She said that she would check now. A carved road led inside the cave. A bright blue cube glowed in the center of the cave. This is the keeper of the ether under the simple name of Cube. The main character turned the stone handle. Opening the door, he smiled. Looking up, he thought that his memories were a little foggy because a lot of time had passed, but he found the right place. He looked at the road on the ground. He then looked at the cube glowing in the middle of the cave. As he walked forward, he thought that if he defeated the guardian and got his hands on the ether, winning this round would be a piece of cake. The cube flashed with a bright flash. Jang Hyun furrowed his eyebrows. The cube hit the ground with a beam of blue energy. Jang Hyun thought that he might die if he had not encountered this before. He thought that this cube had been identified as an advanced technological relic discovered in the ruins of the tower. He thought that he beat it in the finals to gain ether and seal the victory and since he discovered it in the middle of the match, he was able to take advantage of it even though it was banned. The sword in his hand took the form of a crowbar. Magical weapon transformation, give a weapon any shape you wish. Smiling, the main character thought that he assumed that it would be the same this time. He ran forward. Jumping into the attack, he swung the crowbar. He inserted a pry bar between the pieces that made up the cube. He tossed one of the squares aside. He then kicked square. He caught it with his tire iron. Jang Hyun caught it and jumped to the ground. He landed. 
As he fell to the ground, he thought that he had received one piece. Raising his head, he thought that a monster-type guardian would be difficult to defeat with his current characteristics. The cube began to change shape, and the main character thought that the cube was a machine that was designed to protect ancient relics. He thought as long as he knew how it attacked, he could be dealt with. The cube took the form of two palms floating in the air. The cube slammed into his palms, and the main character jumped to the side. Wiping his face, he thought it was close, even though he knew it. Smiling, he thought that he had not missed his chance. The palm-shaped enemy was covered in cracks. The cube fell apart again and fell to the ground. Jan Hyun grinned. He thought that right before dodging his attack, he threw the broken piece between his hands. He thought that no matter how strong the cube was, this part of it was no less strong. He picked up one of the fragments from the ground. The main character smiled and thought that it was quite natural that he broke down. Having walked further, he said that now it was time to pick up the ether. There was a chest on a golden pedestal with steps. The gold on the chest sparkled. Opening the chest, Jang Hyun said that it has been a long time since he last saw it, even if this one is not real. Looking at the item in the chest, he thought that everything was going according to plan. He took the artifact in his hand. Smiling, he decided to install it on his weapon. Hearing the sound, the main character raised his head. Turning around, he wondered if this was what he was thinking about. He thought that defeating a guardian was considered a special achievement, and he gained another skill. Full Bloom, Awaken Talent. Etha, you can use your mana to create an exact copy of an Etha. The main character thought he was lucky. Picking up the gun, he decided to test it. The system reported a magical transformation of the weapon. Jang Hyun started firing pistols. There were smoking marks from the shots left in the wall. Smiling widely, he thought that maybe with this he could use his gun sooner than he thought. The reason he was able to use firearms in his previous life was because of his extremely large mana reserve, which allowed him to shoot bullets created from mana. He thought that he hadn't activated Full Blossom yet, so he didn't have as much mana as before yet. Smiling widely, the main character thought that perhaps he could do this with the help of Aether. Bullet marks were smoking in the rock. Touching them with his hand, he thought that it was good enough for suppressing fire, but it would be difficult to hit the target with it. Smirking, he thought that he could work with this, however. His face was visible on the screen in the judge's room. They looked at the screen in shock, their mouths wide open. Ara said that he took up his pistols again. She asked if that was how he intended to use the ether. Min Siok raised his eyebrow and began to speak. He asked how he dodged that laser blast in the first place. Ara said that she also wants to know. Min Siok, rubbing his chin, said that the cube is not a living thing, so he thinks that it operates according to a certain pattern. He asked what the chances were that he knew about it. Ara said that this was impossible, because the participant would have no way of knowing. She suggested that he most likely has the skill of clairvoyance, which can predict the actions of the enemy. She became lost in thought and closed her eyes. She remembered how the main character tore a piece from the cube. Ara thought, putting that aside, how did he come up with the idea of defeating it with the help of this piece of cube? Opening her eyes, she furrowed her brows. She remembered Min Siok saying that eccentric people are the ones who can truly succeed with the right upbringing and who have true potential. Ara clenched her teeth in irritation. The bright sun shone on the foliage of the trees. Han Jol jumped from one tree branch to another. Pushing off with his foot, he made a high jump. He landed on another tree with a calm face. He silently raised his face to the sky. The participant rating appears in the dialogue box. Han Jol took first place in it, made 17 kills. Remembering the sheets of paper with graphs, he thought that everything was going exactly as the members of the first team of Seoul Private Academy had predicted. Jumping down from the tree, he thought that with 60 eliminations, this round should be over soon. He landed on the ground. Han Jol straightened up with a cold calm expression on his face. Walking along the path, he thought that there was no one who could surpass him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. The sounds of gunfire rang out. Frowning, Han Jol turned his head towards the sound. Jang Hyun, standing among the tall grass, wondered if he had been too late. Frowning, he thought that 60 people had already dropped out. Looking at the rankings, he thought that he could barely get first place if he eliminated all the remaining contestants. But he just wouldn't be able to find everyone and he would be happy to get at least fifth place. Walking through the trees, he thought that he would just try to kill as many as possible. He noticed Jai Su sitting among the grass. Jai Su parted the grass in front of his face. A guy with a sword was walking along a forest path. Jai Su raised his fist, shrouded in a purple aura. Surrounded by purple energy, the guy fell to the ground. Jai Su grinned evilly. He continued to press the guy into the ground, which became covered with cracks and collapsed under the pressure. Jai Su came out of the grass whistling. 
The main character came up from behind and put his hand on his shoulder. Calling him with a smile, he asked how he was doing. Jai Su turned around in horror. As he fell to the ground, he exclaimed in shock. Leaning towards him, Jang Hyun said with the same smile that he had a small problem and he hoped that he could help him. Jumping up from his seat, Jai Su swore and asked if he was kidding. He said he would kill him. The main character, frowning, asked what he called him. Putting his hand familiarly on his shoulder, he said that he had come here to ask him for help. He asked if he thought he was being a little rude. A purple aura enveloped Jai Su's hand. He hit the ground with gravity and Jang Hyun jumped to the side. The main character has landed. Looking at the crater left in the ground, he thought that if he forced him to use this skill over a larger area, but with reduced power, he could sneak in to take all the kills for himself. Looking at his frightened face, he thought that he didn't look like he was going to help him. As he pushed off the ground, he thought it would make him change his mind. Jumping into the attack, he shouted, Head! Jai Su raised his head in amazement. Jang Hyun beat him among the trees, continuing to shout the same word, ignoring Jai Su's protests. After some time, Jai Su was covered in bruises. After a short silence, he asked, sitting on the ground, what he wanted. The main character invited him to work together. Exclaimed in amazement and annoyance, Jai Su said that he didn't want anything to do with him. A pistol appeared above the protagonist's hand, and with a good-natured smile he asked if this was so. He pointed the muzzle of his gun at him. He shot into the ground next to his leg. Jang Hyun put the gun to his head and said that then he would have to get rid of him. Smirking, he added, or you can help me and stay alive. Silence fell between them. Hanging his head, Jai Su asked what he needed. Smiling predatorily, the main character thought that he had been caught. A guy with a sword and a girl with a fighting staff were fighting in the forest. Two human shadows appeared next to them. Jai Su raised his fist into the air, shrouded in a purple aura. The force of gravity pressed the participants to the ground. The main character fired a pistol twice. He exclaimed joyfully that it was a double murder. Jai Su stood behind him with a displeased expression on his face. Someone appeared behind them. He threw his sword at them. Jai Su and Jang Hyun turned around. Using his skill, Jai Su raised his fist, enveloped in a purple aura. The sword fell to the ground. The main character said that it seemed like the sound of the gunfire was too loud and they had attracted a lot of guests here. Three more people came out of the forest. Han Jol furrowed his eyebrows in irritation. The Hunter League is a team sport, naturally, not every player is suitable for attack. Even though Jai Su is in third place with eight kills, gravity is the most effective support skill on the battlefield. Min Seok said he's doing well, but will he end up being Jang Hyun's victim? Ah Ra said that she didn't think so, because he would have already fired if he wanted to eliminate him. Looking at the screen, they said that it looked like they were talking about something. On the screen, the main character pointed his gun at Jai Su sitting on the ground. Ah Ra asked if he wanted to use Jai Su as support. Min Seok thoughtfully said that it was possible. He asked how he found the right person for the task. He said he didn't think they met in advance. Looking to the side, he wondered if he had a skill that could determine the skills of others. He thought he was thinking too much into it. Su Hyuk said that he thinks they would make a great duo since Jai Su can hold back enemies with gravity while Jang Hyun will destroy them with his ether gun. He said it sounded good in words. Min Seok grinned and said that he wouldn't be so sure about that. Looking at Han Jol on the screen, he said that he didn't think his opponent would be that easy to defeat. Han Jol, along with his team, levitated his sword as he approached them. The main character thought about the easiest way to win the battle. He thought, powerful weapon, tactics, good team composition. No, looking at his opponents, he thought that the easiest and most effective way was to outnumber the enemy. Jang Hyun thought that he has Jai Su on his side who can use gravity, but he is just a support. No matter how hard they try, they are unlikely to be able to defeat them. Smirking, he thought that was probably what they thought. He jumped up and the sword sank into the ground. He said with a smile that he had not felt this for a long time. He asked if this was his first time. Han Jol said that he doesn't know what he did, but he got his hands on a rather unusual weapon. He said he would just destroy it. Shooting a sword shrouded in yellow energy, he said, no offense. The main character fired his pistol in response. He thought that in his previous life, Han Jol could control multiple swords with telekinesis. Shooting the gun with a wide smile, he thought that he couldn't do it now and it would be difficult for him to defend himself against many bullets. Han Jol took cover from the bullets behind a tree. Jai Su turned around and began to walk away behind the main character. Jang Hyun thought that Han Jol immediately disappeared behind a tree. He wondered if he was using strategies now, unlike in his previous life. The guy in the yellow jacket waved his sword. The main character deftly dodged, bending back. He opened his eyes wide with concentration. 
hitting the guy on the wrists, he said that, on the other hand, he still had a lot to learn. Moving behind him, he told him that if he got that close to an enemy with a pistol, his chances of missing would be zero. The sound of a shot sounded. Jang Hyun ran along the path. The sword, shrouded in a yellow aura, pursued him. The main character used the all-seeing eye and his eyes turned red. Looking at the opponents through the obstacles, he thought that he would take out the rest while Han Jol defended. Jang Hyun pushed off the ground and jumped. Spinning in the air, he pointed the gun at one of the opponents, who opened his mouth in shock. A shot sounded and the main character looked in the other direction. The girl with the bow opened her eyes in shock. The main character pulled the trigger of the gun. When he landed, he thought about seven kills. Turning to the side, he thought that he was the last one left. Jang Hyun pulled the trigger. The magic bullet quickly shot forward. It hit the sword. The sword fell on the grass. Han Jol clicked his tongue in displeasure. He caught the sword in his hand, and the main character thought that the last one was him, Han Jol. Jang Hyun twirled his pistols in the air. He opened fire with both pistols with a wide smile. Han Jol concentrated on blocking every bullet with his sword. Smiling, the protagonist thought that his ability to deflect every shot was incredible, even taking into account that his bullets travel slowly due to his low mana reserve. As he continued to fire his pistols, he thought that, unfortunately for him, he was better. Han Jol blocked his bullets with quick movements. It was clear from his facial expression that he was getting hard. The main character continued shooting, and swinging his sword left yellow marks in the air. A blue bullet flew out of the barrel of the gun. Jang Hyun's eyes widened. He waved his pistol, and the bullet quickly flew towards the enemy. There was an explosion of blue energy and it changed its trajectory. The bullet was approaching Han Jol from the other side. Smirking, the main character thought that he had hit him. Several people appeared on stage. The host announced that he would introduce 20 survivors to the audience, and the survival game was over. Frowning and clenching his hand into a fist, Jang Hyun thought that he would have gotten them all, he was just unlucky. The judges appeared on the screen. All Rock congratulated the participants with a smile and said that each of them had earned the right to consider themselves a real hunter. She said that when you consider that hunters are a tiny fraction of the awakened, it is truly amazing. Min Siok asked what the hunter's main goal is. He said that some may say that this is to win matches, however, they need people like the first generation of hunters, those who protected humanity and always fought bravely on the front lines, going down into the dungeons. With his arms outstretched, he said he believed the survival game gave them an insight into what it means to be a hunter. The main character listened to him with his head raised to the screen, and Min Siok said that the details of their next task will be revealed at this very place next week, and he is sure that they have all realized their shortcomings in today's survival game, so they need to use the coming week to improve. He said that they are free to use the gym as much as they want, so he highly recommends visiting it at least once. He wished everyone good luck, and the final rating appeared on the screen. Jang Hyun clenched his teeth in irritation. First place was taken by Han Jol with 17 kills, Second place belonged to Hyoju with 10 kills. Third place was shared by Jai Su and Jin Han with 8 kills. Fifth place was occupied by Jang Hyun with 7 kills. Squinting his eyes, the main character sighed and thought that it looked like he had taken fifth place. He noticed something and looked down. The dialogue box says, Task completed. Full bloom, awaken talent. Etha, you can use your mana to create an exact copy of an Etha. Ji Young put his hand on his shoulder. He said that he heard that he came in fifth place. Jang Hyun asked with a smile if he succeeded. Di Young said yes. He asked if he really used a gun, that's all everyone is talking about. He asked how he managed to get it in the first place. The main character said that he found a way. Di Young said, naturally, he somehow found it. But how did he even get it to shoot? Someone called out to Jang Hyun from behind. Jang Hyun turned around and was asked to get ready for the interview. The bespectacled man sat on a folding chair while the cameraman set up the camera. The main character, judging against the green chrome key, asked where he should look. The interviewer said he could look at it. He asked the first question with a smile, why he decided to come to Hunters, the next generation. Raising his head, Chang Hyo said that he thought that there was simply no better candidate than him. The interviewer said that he almost forgot to congratulate him. He congratulated him on passing the final and asked if he could share his thoughts on the first stage. The main character said that everything could have turned out better, but he passed the test as he should have. The interviewer said that he must have faced many of his opponents during the match. He asked if anyone seemed a worthy opponent. The main character confidently answered, no. He thought that Han Jol worried him a little. He wouldn't call him his rival. The interviewer asked, then, how it was that he only took fifth place. Jang Hyun smirked and said that it was because it wouldn't be fun if he got ahead from the start of the show. 
The cameraman looked at him in amazement, and the interviewer thought that this guy was just something. He moved on to the next question. Some time later, the main character and Di Young were eating in the cafeteria. Di Young sighed wearily. Jang Hyun asked what happened. Di Young said that it was painful for him to answer the interview questions. The main character asked what was asked of him. Di Young frowned and said that they were trying to compare him and Jai Su and it made him feel very uncomfortable. Jang Hyun thought that he was sure that was the case because Jai Su always bullied him, and Di Young is also not one to speak ill of elders, although it has nothing to do with him. Waving his spoon, Di Young said that's why he said his opponent was not Jai Su, but Jang Hyun. He smiled widely, and the main character thought that this was even worse, and he should have just agreed that it was Jai Su. Di Young asked what they asked him. Jang Hyun said that he was asked the usual questions, like who would win. Di Young asked what he told them. The main character said that obviously it would be him. Di Young raised his face thoughtfully and said that I think he mentioned Han Jol and Hyo Ju. He told the main character that he is good, but these two are on another level, even among the academy team members. He asked if he had seen them. He said that you can say that they are the aces of the team, and he thinks that they could play in a professional league without any problems. Picking up the sausage from the plate, he told him to believe that he would think the same thing if he saw them in action. Frowning, the main character asked if that was what he had been thinking all this time. He asked if he thought they were on a different level compared to him. Di Young looked at him in amazement. Jang Hyun picked up his tray from the table. He said that if he was like this, he would never achieve anything, and he had better give up these thoughts. He told him to take his time because he was going to practice. Di Young obeyed in amazement, sighing. The protagonist thought that perhaps he had been too harsh on him, but it needed to be said. He thought that everyone had more or less the same talent, with perhaps a few exceptions. He thought that those who are superior to everyone else are the people who have their eyes clear on the top. Taking a sip from his glass, Jang Hyun thought that there was no point in considering himself less capable than others, especially at his age. Someone put a hand on his shoulder. He turned around and a guy with dark hair greeted him with a smile. The guy very quickly said that his name is Jin Han, and he heard that he fought with Han Jol in the first stage. He asked how it was and if he thought he was tough, since he trained with him all the time at the academy and he never managed to defeat him. He said that it seemed like he gave him a run for his money towards the end, and he never saw any of their peers interacting with Han Jol. He asked if he talked too much and what his name was. The main character said his name and asked what he wanted. Jin Han said with a childish smile that Han Jol was furious when the survival game ended. Han Jol told him not to talk too much and go. He grabbed him by the collar. Starting to drag him along, he apologized. Jin Han told the main character to tell him about it next time. After picking his ear, the main character thought that he should tell him, because he has no idea what just happened. As he watched them leave, he thought that he had heard that they were both from the academy, and they seemed to get along well. He looked at them, activating his all-seeing eye. The Han Jol stats window appeared in front of him, skills, sword control, S, acceleration, a stats, strength, 8.3, reflex, 7.3, flexibility, 6.6, .6, endurance, 7.6, regeneration, 7, 6. On the Jin Han stats window it says, skills, strength, B+, stats, strength, 9.3, reflex, 8.3, flexibility, 6.3, stamina, 6.3, regeneration, 6.3. Jang Hyun threw away the glass. He thought that since his full blossom was not activated, some of their stats were superior to his by 50%, and in some cases even doubled. Frowning, he thought that he had managed to win the survival game thanks to the ether, but the next round might not be so easy. The TV show host, standing on stage, named the name of the program and said that this is the dream of many for beginning hunters who want to become pros. Holding up a piece of paper, he loudly announced the start of the TV show. Judges at a large table reviewed the entries. Su Hyuk asked about him being from Seoul Private Academy. Ah Ra said that he is one of the top members. Han Jol stood in the white room, levitating his sword. He said that becoming a hunter had been his dream since childhood. Sitting on a chair, he answered the question, What difficulties did you encounter on the path to becoming a hunter and how did you overcome them? Han Jol said that, however, it was not easy for him and he failed the Seoul Private Academy entrance exam twice. He said that no matter what, he never gave up and turned his failures into opportunities, and he realized that hard work always pays off. He pierced the enemy with his sword. Han Jol said that he also learned to evaluate and improve himself. Di Young watched his interview on his phone, and Han Jol said that this is why he firmly believes that perseverance and unwavering determination are the keys to overcome these problems. The main character asked if it had already started. 
Ji Yong said yes, and he didn't expect the show to air so quickly. He said that in their days technology had come a long way, and it had not been long since the game of survival ended. Jang Hyun asked what people were writing. Ji Yong said that the comments are quite good and many people say that Han Jol's answers are too dry and boring, but they appreciated his modesty. The main character appeared on the screen and the presenter said that, on the other hand, the next participant chose less traditional answers. Jang Hyun smiled on the screen. He was asked the question, what difficulties did you encounter on the path to becoming a hunter and how did you overcome them? The main character said that he is not sure and he does not think that he has actually encountered them. The interviewer said that the Hunter League is a team sport. He asked how he would resolve conflicts between them and team members. Jang Hyun replied that if they left all the decisions to him, then no problems would arise. Ji Yun looked at the main character awkwardly. The question was asked, why did you decide to come to Hunters, the next generation? Han Jol replied that he decided to participate for the purpose of self-improvement and personal growth. The main character said that he thought that there was simply no better candidate than him. The interviewer asked if anyone seemed a worthy opponent. Han Jol calmly replied, no one. Jang Hyun said the same with a smile. The main character turned off the video. Getting to his feet, he called Di Young to practice. He said in frustration that they didn't even get to the survival game. Jang Hyun said he'll watch the replay later. Turning around, Di Young asked why he only did leg exercises. The main character asked what he thought his role was. Di Young asked, ranged fighter. Jang Hyun asked what he thought was most important for ranged fighters. Di Young asked, huge damage. Lying on the simulator, the main character said, this is mobility. He said that he may have noticed this in the survival game. But Han Jol and other elite melee fighters either have outstanding mobility or attack, which poses a threat to ranged fighters. Di Young folded his arms across his chest, and the main character said that therefore his mobility should be the same as melee players, and even better. Someone said that this is an interesting point of view. He appeared before them. The large, elderly man said that, contrary to his claim, strategies aimed at eliminating ranged fighters were rare in the Korean Hunter League. He asked what he would say to this. The man started looking around, and Jang Hyun wondered who it was. He thought that he must be no ordinary person if he had access to this room. He said that had been true so far. Rising from the simulator, he said that if you look at how teams play against the British ECG or the French ALT, you will notice that they primarily favor ranged fighters. In other words, it completely depends on which ranged fighter they have to fight. Frowning. He said that this was more than enough reason for him to train his legs. The man grinned in response. Approaching him, he asked if he meant to say that his skills as a ranged player would make him a priority target for melee fighters. Laughing, he clapped his hands and said that he was brave, and this was very interesting. Eyes widening, he frowned and looked at him. Looking at the main character, he said that excessive self-confidence is one of the main reasons for failure. As he left, he turned around and told him to consider this advice based on his years of experience. He said he would watch him. The door closed and they looked after him. Di Young spread his hands and asked what it was and who it was. Jang Hyun said he doesn't know. He lay down on the machine and said with a smile that he said he would be watching him so he would show him what he could do. Someone asked the chairman if something was bothering him. The chairman asked him what he thought was most important for ranged fighters. The subordinate said that he would say it was support skills and attack power. The chairman turned around and said that this was incorrect. The man turned out to be Lee Jun Teak, chairman of the Hunters Association, a first-generation hunter. The subordinate asked, then maybe the accuracy of the attack. He said that while there are many important factors for ranged fighters, even the most powerful attack is useless with low accuracy, so it is very important. Jun Teak waved his hand and told him to forget about it. Leaning back in his chair, he remembered asking his friend why he always exercised his legs. He asked if he was going to work with Mana. The guy with the bow told him that the most important thing for a ranged fighter is his legs. He slapped his hand against his leg. Jun Teak asked what he was talking about. The guy smiled and asked if he knew that monsters always attack ranged fighters first, because they know that they are weak in close combat. He said they should always be on the move after they shoot. Jun Teak asked in amazement if that was all. The guy asked what he wanted to say by this, because if the position of a ranged fighter is discovered, it is certain death for him. He said that he doesn't understand it because he fights in close combat. Old Jun Teak thought with his eyes closed that it was true. He thought that ranged fighters needed mobility, and this could be applied to the Hunter League. Frowning, he thought that this did not apply to the current league, since most of their best hunters had died. Slamming his palm on the table, he thought that in a high-level league, especially in a world league, 
This was really the case. Leaving the office, Jun Teak thought that he had not even joined the Hunters League yet, but was already thinking about the international arena. He opened his eyes and looked forward. Remembering Jang Hyun, he wondered whether it was his ego or confidence. The main character looked at his characteristics. Strength, 5.16, Reflex, 6.1, Flexibility, 6.6, .6, Endurance, 5.66, Regeneration and Mana, 5.6. Wiping his face with a towel, he thought that his stats were growing faster than in his previous life, and it seemed to be due to full bloom. Looking at the skill, he thought that this skill seemed to have two main features, and it gave him talents after completing a certain task, which were essentially completely new skills, and also greatly increased the growth rate of his stats. Di Yung trained his arm muscles, and Jang Hyun thought that considering that it greatly increases stats once activated, this is truly an incredible skill. Di Yung let go of the handles of the exercise machine, wiping his face with a towel. He asked what he would do after training and if he had any advice for him. The main character thought that Di Young is in good physical shape after training at the academy, so he doesn't need to train as hard as him. He said he didn't know him enough to come up with anything. Di Young said it's true. Smirking, the main character asked how about a duel with him. The steel door closed. Jang Hyun and Di Young stood opposite each other, holding swords in their hands. Di Young asked in amazement that he even knew how to use a sword. The main character said yes, looking at the sword blade in his hands. Clutching the hilt of the sword in his hand, Di Young thought that he wouldn't stand a chance against him if he had a gun. Taking a fighting stance, he thought that he would not lose in a sword fight. The main character smiled slightly. He immediately ran to attack. They clashed swords in battle. They exchanged several quick swings of the sword. Di Young found himself in a defensive position and his hands were shaking with tension. He looked down. He jumped far back. He wondered what was happening in shock. Di Young wondered why it was so hard for him to fight, since it was just an ordinary sword. The sword in the protagonist's hands was enveloped in blue light, and he used magical weapon transformation. The sword turned into a spear. Soon he was holding a spear in his hands, and Di Young wondered if it was because of the difference in their talent levels. Jang Hyun swung his spear. Di Young blocked his attack with his sword. Staggering back, he thought that he couldn't reach him, but he could reach him. Blue energy enveloped the spear in the hands of the protagonist. Di Young frowned and thought, what now? The spear turned into a huge sword, and the main character raised it above his head. Looking at the sword approaching him, Di Young opened his mouth and thought about how he should repel this attack. There was a scream. He fell to the floor, breathing heavily. Hearing Jang Hyun's voice, he raised his face. The main character asked what he would say about his supposed rival. Sitting on the floor, Di Young said that he was a little better than him. Jang Hyun grinned, paying attention to the word a little. He said he gave in to it. Di Young opened his eyes in shock. Looking at his face, he thought, it doesn't look like he's joking. Pursing his trembling lips, he wondered why he was so weak compared to him, and whether he really lacked talent that much. The main character asked if he knew why he lost. The weapon in his hands turned into just a sword. Pointing the sword at him, he said that he had chosen the wrong weapon. He said this is the sword he uses. He said that now they will look at his strengths. Jang Hyun said that due to his acceleration skill, he has the element of surprise and is excellent at making split-second decisions. He asked how he could use these advantages along with the long sword. He said no way. He asked what if, instead of it, he used a sword designed for light and quick strikes, such as a rapier. Di Young looked at him. The main character raised his sword, which turned into a rapier. He stomped his foot hard, making quick thrusts with his rapier. He said that combined with his skill, he would be able to crush his enemies with quick strikes. Di Young opened his mouth in amazement. Looking at it, he wondered if he could do it. They were leaving the gym, and the main character asked what he thought. Di Young said he's still not sure, but he thinks he has an idea. Someone clicked his tongue and said that he considered himself a tough guy after his duel with the worm of the academy. The main character saw a guy who was looking at a recording of a training session. Glancing at the screen, he wondered if he had been watching them all this time. Looking at the disgruntled guy, he thought that it seemed like he really didn't like him, since he suddenly decided to provoke him. He thought that he was not one of those who turned a blind eye to such things. Jang Hyun said with a grin that he wondered if he could handle it. The guy irritably told him to repeat it. The main character replied that he heard everything. He asked if he had any problems. With a smug grin, he invited him to fight and asked if he was scared. The guy, cursing furiously, agreed. Jang Hyun thought that he placed fifth with him in the survival game. He thought his stats were pretty good too. 
There was a Kim Jin Seung status box on the dialog box. Skills, telekinesis, A, acceleration, B. Stats, strength, 7, reflex, 6.6, .6, flexibility, 7.6, stamina, 5.6, regeneration, 5.6, mana, 7. Jin Seung pointed his finger at the empty room and the main character thought that his stats are practically nothing compared to him, and he would definitely lose if everything depended only on strength. Flexing his fists, he smiled and said that he wouldn't even need pistols to beat someone like him. Jang Hyun and Jin Seung stood opposite each other. The main character thought that Jin Seung is one of the best players among beginners. Besides, pistols are useless because he already knows about them. Jin Seung asked if he was ready with a grin. The main character with a wide smile suggested starting. He thought there was a chance he might lose. Swinging his sword, he thought that this did not mean that he would retreat. Jin Seung took a few jumps back. With a wave of his hand, he threw two throwing knives. By blocking his attack, Jang Hyun thought that he was a mid-range fighter, and he was going to put pressure on him so that he would not be able to fight back. Jin Seung chuckled. Two knives were approaching the main character from behind. Turning around, he thought that he would not be able to dodge it in time. Hitting the blue barrier, the knives bounced back with a clang. The protagonist thought that it was fortunate that he had obtained the ether through full blossom, otherwise it would have been all over for him. He thought about what to do, because it looked like he was going to continue throwing knives at him, keeping his distance. Jin Soon used telekinesis while holding a knife covered in green energy over his palm. Frowning, he thought he was sure he had it. He thought how he could reflect it. He thought it looked like he had an ace up his sleeve. A throwing knife appeared in the protagonist's hand. He threw the knife at his opponent. Jin Seung smiled and thought that it was just one knife. Shrouded in a green aura, he thought that he could easily stop it with telekinesis. He raised his fist towards the knife. Jang Hyun used the all-seeing eye and his eyes flashed red. He thought that he knew he would do this. Three more throwing knives appeared in his palm. Throwing the knives, he thought that the first knife was just a preparation for the real attack with the remaining knives. Jin Seung frowned and the green aura around him intensified. The main character thought that he stopped four knives with telekinesis. He thought that, however, he would not be able to use this skill on multiple targets at the same time in such a period of time. One of the knives was shaking in the air. Jang Hyun thought that this meant that the last knife he was able to completely stop would definitely hit him while he was focused on the others. The tip of the knife was right in front of Jin Seung's face, and he closed his eyes. The voice announced that Jang Hyun prompted. He clenched his hand into a fist happily. Someone was watching him on the screen. Someone asked if this was his supposed winner. Min Seok turned around. Sitting on a bench opposite a man with blonde hair, he asked what he would say. The man adjusted his glasses with two fingers. He opened his eyes and used the eye of analysis. He said he had good strategic sense and it was very smart of him to hide the three knives. He added that his characteristics are not that high. Min Seok grinned and thought that he knew it. The man asked him if he knew anything about this guy. He told him not to play dumb and asked him what his skills were. Min Seok smiled awkwardly and the man said that there was no way he could have pulled off this strategy if he didn't know about his opponent's telekinesis. Min Seok said that he believes that he has something similar to the Eye of Analysis like he or the first generation hunter, Kim Seung Wook. Eye of Analysis, an extremely useful and rare skill that only two people are known to possess. The man asked if he had too much hope for him just because he predicted his opponent's skill. Min Seok said that he feels like they may be underestimating him. Recalling how the main character opened the chest, he said that he knew about the location of the hidden dungeon in the survival game. He said that during the qualifying stage, he only targeted the clone chips. Smiling, he said that if he debuts in the first division, people would say that he is the reincarnation of Kim Seung Wook, the legend himself. Min Seok asked the man if they would like to take him in. The man said yes. He thought that his eye of analysis could see people's characteristics, but not their skills. He thought that this guy, Jang Hyun, knew about his opponent's telekinesis and came up with a strategy to defeat him. He remembered how he threw a knife at his opponent. The man asked if they had already decided which team he would be on. Min Seok said that he must have liked it very much. He said that, unfortunately, the teams that sponsor the show have priority in selection. Gritting his teeth, the man thought that he must find a way to get it for himself. There was noise in the training room. The main character, falling to the floor, thought that he didn't know. Looking at the dialogue box, he thought that he simply did not understand what exactly Full Bloom considered a special achievement. As he rose to his feet, he thought that he was in no hurry to figure this out. Di Young took a deep breath, smiling. He said that it seemed to him that now he could defeat him. Passing by him, Jang Hyun told him not to talk nonsense. Di Young countered that he must agree that he has become much better. 
he ran his hand over the rapier, and the protagonist thought that he had actually become stronger after following his advice. He thought that he still didn't stand a chance against him. Di Young quickly followed him. There were video cameras among the school desks. There was camera equipment set up in a classroom full of people. The main character entered the classroom. He thought he was wondering why they were called here. He and Di Young sat down at their desks, and he wondered if they were going to teach them something. The TV show judges entered the classroom. Ah Ra greeted those present. She asked how their week's break, or to be more precise, their week of training had been. Di Young smiled contentedly and she said that this week might have been quite fruitful for some of them. The main character sat with a calm face, and she said that for others, perhaps this week had been ordinary. Ah Ra put her hands on her hips. She said she believes they still have a lot to learn. Min Siok said that each of them is a budding talent with great potential, but there is still a significant gap between them and professional hunters. The door swung open and he said that was why they had assembled a team of mentors for them. The teachers entered the classroom. Min Siok said that each of the three people introduced in front of him had competed in first division leagues and boasted victories or other achievements that were equally noteworthy. He said they would be responsible for both coaching and evaluating their performance. One behind the mentors stood with a stern expression on his face, and Min Siok said that the mentors would train them to perform the function assigned to them, and their performance in said roles would be evaluated in a three-on-three -three hunter mini-league format. The main character suddenly felt something. He thought that this was mana manipulation, and it was enough to put pressure on everyone here. The big man said that his name was Lee Song Jin and he would train melee fighters. He said he can't stand those who don't stand firm or who are deliberately ignorant. He said that what he hated most was self-righteous fools. He turned his attention to the main character, frowning. Siong Jin told them to remain humble and take their lessons seriously. Ah Ra said that after evaluating their performances in the qualifying stage and the survival game last week, they will determine roles for each of them. She told them to approach their mentors as soon as their name was called. She called Jang Hyun, and he stood up. Ah Ra said, close combat. Jang Hyun's eyes widened. He tilted his head to the side in disappointment. They found themselves in a square stone room. The main character thought in shock why he was put in close combat. He looked at Han Jol. He then looked at Hyo Ju, who was stretching her hands. Looking at Di Young next to him, he thought that there were a lot of promising people in this group. Siang Jin appeared in the room. He shouted at them to forget everything they had been taught before, and he didn't care what academy they were from, because each of them was weaker than the hunters of the third division. He stood opposite the participants. Siang Jin said that as they may have noticed during the Hunter League match, all hunters use mana-activated skills or mobility devices such as air anchor and air step. He said that they fight each other on the ground, but even the third division players are skilled in air combat. The main character thought that these devices, activated by mana, allowed hunters to participate in more dynamic and spectacular battles. Siong Jin said that he will teach them how to use the air anchor and air step, and he doesn't need melee hunters who don't have the ability to use them. He loudly announced the start. The guy's leg was wrapped in a white thread, and he hung upside down in the air. Jang Hyun, looking at him, thought that they were definitely difficult to use for the first time. As he stepped into the air, he thought that before, he could use them as if they were part of his body. Grinning, he thought he'd see if he still had muscle memory. The main character looked away. Seong Jin, standing in front of the guy who fell to the ground, said that they were destined to become the rising stars of the Korean Hunter League. He asked if this was all they could do. He rudely shouted at him to get up. Then he shouted to the guy hanging upside down in the air that the third division league was known as the Rookie Graveyard for a reason because it was the perfect trap for poor fools like him. He shouted that some didn't even know how to use an air anchor or a step. Jang Hyun thought it was very loud and he could barely concentrate. He looked up. Di Young had difficulty moving in the air, and the main character thought that Di Young seemed to be having problems too. Frowning and sighing, he thought that this was expected, since they had not been given any instructions at all. He shouted at him to come down because he was doing it wrong. Di Young looked down in amazement. He landed on the floor. He asked if he was going to train, because he said that he was going to test them in this. Jang Hyun said that he should worry about himself. He asked if he thought he could cope at this rate. Di Young asked what he wanted him to do then. The main character said that he must first decide on the length of the mana rope, and then maintain a constant flow of mana, otherwise the length of the rope will constantly change so he cannot maintain his balance. Pointing his finger at him, he told him to concentrate on his center of gravity. Throwing the hook into the air, he said that when he is in the air, his body should serve as the center of gravity. The hook touched the ceiling. Jang Hyun held the thread tightly in his hand. He did a somersault in the air. 
He then landed on his feet, turning to Di Young. He said that this would make it much easier to prevent a fall or move the body. He told him to always remember mana and concentrate on maintaining a constant flow of mana. Grabbing the thread, Di Young said, use the body as a center of gravity and control the flow of mana. He threw the hook up. Holding the thread in his hand, he sighed. He jumped into the air and did a somersault. He landed on the floor. Turning around, he asked with a joyful smile if he had seen it. He exclaimed that he got it right the first time, and he definitely has talent. Xiong Jin called out to them and asked if they came here to have fun. He said they couldn't handle anything. Turning to the main character, he asked what his name was. Jang Hyun said his name and wondered if he was trying to discipline them. He thought he didn't care. Xiong Jin frowns in irritation. Gritting his teeth, he said that it seemed like he just stood there and did nothing because he was confident in his abilities. The main character answered, it seems so. He thought he might retreat, but he was curious as to how they were going to test them with the air anchor and the step. Smiling, he thought that, in addition, given his past life, then technically he is older, and it is the duty of the elders to educate his younger comrades. Turning around, Xiong Jin said that he believed that he had given them all enough time. He said they will start the test. He told everyone to get ready. Min Siok, flipping through the list of melee participants, asked why his name was on the list. Ah Ra asked if he was talking about Jang Hyun. Min Siok, rubbing his chin, said that he assumed that he would be assigned to the ranged fighter group. He asked if she had made a mistake. Ah Ra said that she thought it would be a good idea to assign him there since he is skilled with melee weapons. But more importantly, he is too selfish, so she assigned him to the melee team under Siang Jin. Min Siok smiled awkwardly and asked if her plan was to piss off the newcomer by pitting him against a Division I hunter. Ah Ra said what's done is done. Besides, since training is one of the key goals of this program, she thinks it's okay. She remembered the protagonist's grin. Frowning, she thought that the arrogant newcomers needed to be brought down to earth. Siang Jin said that the test is to reach the air anchor above. Putting his hands on his sides, he said to begin. Turning around, he said he hoped the contestant who felt confident enough to mess around would show what he could do. Looking at the main character, he said that otherwise he did not deserve to become a hunter. Smirking, Jang Hyun wondered if he was trying to get rid of him with this test. He asked what he would do if he succeeded. Seong Jin said that he will give him absolute freedom to do whatever he wants in his classes. Grinning, he added, if you can do it. He thought it was impossible. He thought that this anchor was a hundred meters above the floor. Smirking, Xiong Jin thought that this height was beyond the reach of first-time anchor users, and even intermediate users couldn't do it. He looked with a grin at the guys who were trying to get to the anchor. A sword flew through the air, shrouded in a yellow aura. Xiong Jin turned around in amazement. Han Jiol jumped onto the sword and flew through the air. Xiong Jin thought that he was using the sword to fly up. He thought that it was not telekinesis, but something more powerful. He smiled and said that he wished he could use an air anchor, but perhaps he could get higher. Someone exclaimed, and he frowned and looked in the direction of the sound. Xiong Jin opened his eyes wide. The main character held the thread with his hand. He calmly rose into the air, surrounded by spectators. Jang Hyun grinned. Pushing off from the air, he quickly rose up along the luminous thread. Xiong Jin wondered in amazement, isn't he afraid of falling? The main character made another jump with a smile. The magic circle under his foot began to disappear. He turned over in the air. Xiong Jin thought he was falling. Jang Hyun smiled slightly. He threw the anchor up. He pulled the thread with his hand. He began to sway from side to side. The main character kicked off the air step. He began to quickly run up the wall. Hook was getting closer to him. He grabbed the anchor with his hand. Sighing, he said that it was quite cool here. Xiong Jin looked at him in shock. The main character was sitting in the air on a magic circle. Xiong Jin wondered how he managed to do this, since this is his first time using these devices. The main character looked at him with a smile, and Xiong Jin thought that this was impossible. Some time later, Xiong Jin coughed, clearing his throat. With his arms outstretched, he returned to his explanation and said that there are two main roles in close combat. He said that the first role is the initiators, whose role is to start the battle and defeat the opponents. Yawning, Jang Hyun thought that this was a boring theory after practice. Xiong Jin said that they usually have special skills that allow them to assist allies in close combat and immobilize opponents. He said the second role is melee, which he's sure they're familiar with. The main character lay face down on the desk and thought that he was glad that he could not tell him anything. Xiong Jin, looking at him nervously, said that the task of melee fighters is to enter the fight after the initiator, focusing on the enemy or key fighters. Frowning, he said that if you break it down further, there are many more roles, but for now that's all they need to know. The main character thought that nothing could be done. 
because he had to win the argument. Remembering how he sat on the magic circle, he thought that he had spent years in the Hunter League, and for him it was a piece of cake. He thought, anyway, when this note ended up in his pocket, the note says, let's meet, come after class, during the break, in the backyard, seven hours from the training center. I want to show you something interesting. Jang Hyun thought about who it was from and what he wanted. Frowning, he thought that it looked like he needed to go and check. He found himself among the trees. There was a note in his hand. Looking around, he was amazed to think that there was no one here. Frowning, he wondered if this was some kind of joke. He noticed something below. Using his all-seeing eye, he thought that something was wrong here. The main character crouched in front of a square of land. The square of land moved away. Below it were steps leading down. The main character went down, touching the wall with his hand. He wondered if this was a secret area. Noticing something, he opened his eyes wide. A black silhouette stood in front of him. Jang Hyun thought that, according to the internet, this is the chairman of the Hunters Association. Jun Teek turned around, wearing an orange jacket. Smiling, he said that he had come. With his hands in his pockets, he said that he had found a way to get here. The main character said that his note was useless. He asked how anyone could even get here with these directions. Raising his palm, he thought that he must have been testing him to see if he could find his way. He said that he hoped that he would at least say why he called him here. Jun Teek said that he watched all his moments. Recalling his interview, he said that only one episode had aired so far. Frowning, he thought that, of course, this was not all he knew about him. Remembering how he looked at the screen, rubbing his chin, he thought that he had seen him training. He thought he demonstrated incredible mobility and observation. He thought he was interested. Jun Teek said with a smile that he decided to try to guess who would win this fight. Jang Hyun asked if he thought it would be him. Raising his hand, Jun Teek said yes, and not only that, he is confident that he will make it to the first division, and perhaps even higher. The main character had a note in his hand. He asked with a smile what he wanted to show him, because he said that he had something interesting. Turning around, Jun Teek said that he really said that. He put his palm on some device. The door swung open in front of him. Looking into one part of the display case, the main character saw an S-rank weapon. Looking to the other side of the display case, he saw specialized mana equipment. Jang Hyun asked why he was showing him this. Jun Teek asked if he didn't want them. Swallowing, the main character thought that of course he wants them, and he even sees the weapons he used in his previous life. Caliborn, an incredible sword that he was allowed to use in an exhibition match as a prize for winning the match. He thought that using this sword was extremely pleasant. He thought it was also special when it was turned into a gun. With his hands out to the side, Jun Teek said that he could lend him one of these weapons if he wanted. Jang Hyun asked if he could just give it to him. Jun Teek, holding up his finger, said that he would understand if he knew the cost of this weapon. He said that it was much more valuable than the weapons he would receive from the Mora's workshop. Sighing, the main character smiled and said that, after all, it was just a weapon. Looking to the side, he suggested getting down to business. He asked what he wanted from him. Jun Teek rubbed his hand over his beard. He thought that people tended to try to suck up to him when they found out that he was a first-generation hunter and the chairman of the Hunters Association. Looking at the main character, he thought that this guy was looking down on him. Smiling, he thought that this is not something you see every day. He told him to join the Hunters Association as a hunter and not as an employee. He said that if he joined, he would allow him to borrow any of the weapons presented here. The main character asked what he would get from this. Jun Teek asked if he didn't know what it meant to join the Hunters Association. Jang Hyun said that he knows, but he doesn't understand how it would benefit him. He said if that's all he can offer him, then he's leaving. Jun Teek opened his mouth in shock and the main character said that the next class would start soon. Jun Teek asked him to wait and said that he might be overestimating his abilities. He asked if he knew how many young talents he had seen who excelled in the second and third divisions but failed to progress further. The main character said no, and he is not interested. Turning around, he said with a confident smile that the only thing that mattered to him was whether he could do it or not. Bowing, he said that he appreciated that he showed him all this. After saying goodbye, he left. Jun Teek looked after him in shock. 